I have seen firsthand how the system is rigged against our citizens, just like it was rigged against Bernie Sanders. He never had a chance, never had a chance. But his supporters will join our movement because we will fix his biggest single issue, trade deals that strip our country of its jobs and strip us of our wealth as a country. Despite Donald Trump's attempt to woo his supporters, it's safe to say Bernie Sanders was not impressed. The Vermont senator fired off at Trump during his RNC speech, posing the question, quote, is this guy running for president or dictator? It was the single most retweeted tweet of the night, but all is not well within the Democratic Party. The Democratic National Committee is under new scrutiny after leaked emails published by WikiLeaks suggesting DNC officials derided the Sanders campaign while publicly, publicly insisting that they were neutral. And joining me now is Jeff Weaver, the campaign manager for the Bernie Sanders campaign. Good to see you, my friend. Good to be here, Joy. Great to uh, see you in Philadelphia. So let's talk about that. These leaks from the DNC, um, pretty damning stuff. You, you guys had been charging all along that the Democratic National Committee was on the side of Hillary Clinton. Yes. Now you see essentially evidence that at least top officials in it. We can't I, say the whole I, DNC, no, of the course, top, of yeah, course. but there were officials in it. Well, look, it. it was always the case, and, and I think we were pretty clear that it was uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and some of her top uh, people who were uh, clearly trying to put their finger on, this, on, on the scale. Uh, and, you know, this just bears that out. I mean, they are required by the DNC charter to be neutral. They clearly were not neutral. Uh, they were trying to plant negative stories about Senator Sanders. And then, you know, even more dis dis disappointingly, you know, they were trying to attack him on his religion. I mean, it's really... Un not something that should be going on in the Democratic Party. Yeah, and the person who sent that email did, did apologize, but it is, un, I mean, unprecedented. Um, we, we hadn't heard anything like that before in a Democratic campaign. What do you want to see happen now? Now, the, the, the person who did the email about Sanders' religion has apologized. What do you want to see happen? Well, look, Joy, what does well, Senator Sanders want to see happen? Well, and I, and I, he's been clear this morning on a number of shows, but look, we're at a period now where we're trying to build unity in the Democratic Party. We're trying to bring everybody together so that we can elect Hillary Clinton and defeat Donald Trump. Uh, and you had this sort of sort of thorn that's still stuck in there, which is Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who's been really a figure of disunity. And I think it's really time that she, you know, leaves her position. We put somebody in there who has the capacity to lead in a way that's going to, uh, you know, bring unity to the party and help us energize, you know, the young people, working class people, people of color that we need to bring out in the in the in the fall. She's not going to be speaking at the uh, convention. You think she should step down? Oh, absolutely, she should step down. Yes, I think. I mean, look, there's going to be more. This isn't the full extent of the emails. There are going to be more emails. And it's only going to get worse and worse. As you know, there were some very heated times during the campaign. Mm -hmm. And some of those time periods are not covered by these emails. So there's going to be more emails. And it's only going to get worse and worse. You know, time just to get rid of the problem and move on, right? And, and, and like I said, build this unity. We need to defeat Trump. Yeah. And I, I want to play a little bit. You mentioned that uh, Senator Sanders has made comment uh, about uh, this situation. He did speak with Aaron Chuck Todd on Meet the Press this morning. Let me play a little bit of what he said. This really does not come as a shock to me or my supporters. Uh, there is no question but the DNC was on Secretary Clinton's side from day one. We all know that. Uh, and I think, as I have said a long time ago, that the time is now for Debbie Wasserman Schultz uh, to step aside, not only for these issues. So, very clear uh, that Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, in, in your view, in the campaign's view, should step aside. What if she doesn't? Well, I mean, look, I think it's just... The problem is, is that we're trying to bring the party together. And I think it's when she steps out on that stage to gavel in the convention, there's going to be thousands of people who are going to be booing her. Is that really how we want to start the Democratic convention? I mean, the Republicans spent days dealing with this whole, you know, lifting of, the, of uh, Michelle Obama's speech by, by Mrs. Trump. Is that really how, what we want to be talking about for two days here at the Democratic convention, about these emails and about Debbie Wasserman Schultz and how she tried to skew the election in favor of the secretary? Yeah. I don't think that's what we want to be talking well, about. What, I want to play, uh, show you one. Uh, Donald Trump tweeted this morning. This was actually the second version version of this tweet, because the first one, uh, I think, had some spelling issues. Yeah, so they yeah, redid it and fixed the spelling. Uh, but this is what Donald Trump said. He said, looks like Bernie people will fight. If not, their blood, sweat, and tears was a total waste of time. Cain stands for the opposite. And then I want to show you a poll um, that Bloomberg Politics took. But this is back in June, of who Sanders supporters say they will vote for, uh, at least according to Bloomberg, back in June, 55% Hillary Clinton, 22% Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Um, Gary Johnson, 18 percent. Do you think there is a real chance that Donald Trump can pick up support from, from your voters? From well, United? I sure hope not, because Donald Trump stands for everything that Bernie Sanders does not stand for. I mean, they are really polar opposites. But the real concern is, is uh, will some of the Sanders supporters support third-party candidates or just sit home? 
and we need everybody to come out. We need to be unified. Uh, we need to take the fight to the Republicans and to Donald Trump in the fall. And this, you know, this is a distraction. This whole email thing is a distraction. We just need to get by it. Yep. And this sort of slow drip, drip, drip of nobody really wanting to pull the Band-Aid off, I think is wrong. I think for the good of the party, for the good of Secretary Clinton's campaign in the fall, and for the good of uh, unifying the party, we've just got to, like, pull off the Band-Aid and move on. And, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, not, uh, no direct support, no backup from the Hillary Clinton campaign for Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who was a, a big supporter of Hillary Clinton's in 2008, um, is, is viewed as being a big supporter of us now. What do you make of the fact that Hillary Clinton campaign has essentially said, ask Debbie Wasserman Schultz about her issues. We're not really uh, backing her up. Well, I don't want to speak for them, obviously. I don't, I don't work for them. But, uh, you know, I cannot believe that anybody in the Clinton campaign would condone the type of uh, behavior and, and discussions that were going on in those emails over at the DNC. Yeah. What are we going to hear from uh, Senator Sanders uh, in his speech? Well, I think what we're going to hear from him is how we need to elect Hillary Clinton uh, in the fall, how we need to uh, continue the political revolution, as he calls it, continue to fight for uh, the progressive agenda that he laid out uh, during the campaign, and that is largely encapsulated in the Democratic Party platform. Yeah. Um, and you guys fought hard on that platform and on the Rules Committee. Talk, lay out for our folks who haven't been following it um, what you feel that the Sanders campaign won in the platform and at the Rules Committee yesterday. Well, look, there were some very, very intense negotiations. I know there was some criticism and carping out from some people who were not really in the know uh, about how long it took for him to endorse the secretary, but yeah. but it didn't come from the from the from the Clinton campaign because they knew we were in negotiations with them. Uh, so we had some very important things that were added to the platform: a $15 minimum wage, a price on carbon, uh, free college tuition at public colleges and universities. That was a big for, concession by yeah, Hillary Clinton. Oh, oh, absolutely. Look, it's it's really an example of sort of what I would call sort of gracious leadership, you know, mm -hmm. magnanimous leadership, sure. uh, and because they have an interest in bringing the party together as well. And then in the Rules Committee, you guys have won some uh, a commission that's going to look at some of the rules in the campaign. Campaigns, including superdelegates. Yes, exactly. So this the issue of superdelegates is a very important issue. We want to make sure that the, the voters are the ones who control the process, not the party insiders. Uh, the, the provision that's in the commission, uh, if enacted uh, or when enacted, will make two-thirds of current superdelegates pledge delegates. Uh, and so we'll have made a major now, reform. Now, how will you protect the Congressional Black Caucus has been very clear that they are concerned if you got rid of superdelegates, it would reduce the influence of African Americans in the process. Yeah, but see, so the, everybody who's now a superdelegate will still be coming to the convention, will still have a vote. Uh, the members of Congress, the governors, the president uh, will have, will be unpledged just as they are now. Uh, the other people who are superdelegates now will still be a special status of delegate, but they will have to vote in proportion to the states that they represent. And really quickly, uh, thoughts on Tim Kaine as the uh, vice presidential Nominee, a lot of Sanders supporters weren't happy. No, I know, and if people wanted a sort of more uh, overtly progressive candidate, I, I, I certainly uh, appreciate that. You know, I'm from Virginia. I live in Virginia. I voted for Tim Kaine in the past. He's my senator. Uh, you know, and he, he's his uh, politics seem to be animated a little bit by his Catholic faith. Uh, and I sort of appreciate that. And, you know, hopefully as he, you know, finds his way as the vice president, he'll be more animated by that part of his experience. Yeah. Well, based on my unscientific Twitter poll uh, that I did uh, yesterday, it started out sort of meh on Tim Kaine. I think after his speech, people felt a, a lot better about him. His bio was actually quite progressive. Yeah. Jeff Weaver, thank you very much. It's really so nice appreciate you here, being Joe. here. Yeah, great, as always. Great thank to you. see you. Thank you. All right. Coming up, the Reverend Al Sharpton weighs in. Don't go anywhere. Hey there. I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.